Hey, it's Mark Podolsky at The Land Geek with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And I'm really excited for today's guest. He is going to teach us a lot about business. But before we talk to our guest, I have to properly introduce my co-host, the brain, the professor, the Land Geek Sherpa, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. If you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek learn anything about anything investor ninjas.com scott todd how are you mark i'm great how are you i'm great i'm great i'm really excited about our guest. he's paul higgins from build live give.com if you're not familiar with paul he uh, is a solopreneur that was able to escape the corporate rat race in fact his his uh his story is so uh, incredible. I, I'd rather just hear it directly from Paul. Paul, welcome to the podcast. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot for uh, having me, Mark and Scott, and welcome to all the listeners. So, uh, yeah, I, I my short version is uh, I spent 18 years at one of the biggest companies in the world, Coca-Cola, and then... Uh, Almost 12 months ago, my best mate gave me a, a kidney so I could continue to run my own business. So that's sort of my short version of uh, a very long story. Wow. Wow. So how, how did you kind of escape? I mean, you know, you're the biggest one. You are the biggest brand in the world. Um, so it's hard to say escape. But what was that culture like? Because I can imagine as far as jobs are concerned, that might be one of the best ones. Um, but what really motivated you to, to go out on your own? Yeah, so uh, look, uh, Coca-Cola's a brilliant company and a brilliant brand. I think the, you know, over time, the product itself started to lose a little bit of uh, momentum. So, uh, you know, you can tell by my accent, I'm from uh, Australia, or if you didn't, listeners, if you don't know, <laughs> that's where I'm from. And, <laughs> And we're sort of the canary in the coal mine. So, you know, sugar in particular hit hardest here, I think, than most other markets in the world. So bring in company, uh, but the product itself started to lose a little bit of relevance. And, you know, I could just see, I could see the writing on the wall that it was going to get harder and harder to, to make profits when, uh, you know, 60 to 70% of the profit that's generated by a business is a product that people don't really want to drink anymore. So that was one side of it. The other side of it was my inherited condition called polycystic kidney disease was taking effect. And my specialist basically said, look, you got two choices here. Do you want to live to see your grandkids or you want to continue working for one of the biggest companies in the world? So, you know, the, the choice was pretty obvious. Wow. So then what did you do? Yeah, so I started as a as a, an executive coach, and then I quickly realised I was a much better mentor than coach. And then I just um, worked with smaller businesses, and you know that's where I suppose there's a parallel. I worked with a lot of solopreneurs and people that had left corporate, had a great nest egg, so they invested in property, and that was sort of their passive income. But they also needed to generate some uh, some cash flow in the short term, and that's you know, led me now to helping, um, you know, mainly coaches and consultants run their own business, but build, live, give is about, you know, build a great business to live your life and to give back. And a lot of that's through uh, their investment in property. Interesting. Interesting. So Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? You, you can have a, a corporate background. No, I think that, uh, I mean, like that's, that's the thing is it, it all comes back down to choices, right, Mark? We've talked before on this podcast about like how we put a lot of emphasis, a lot of people put a lot of emphasis on the, on their corporate gigs, right? Like, I mean, I know I did, thought there was a lot of security in that thing. And uh, the reality is, is that the security is, is not there, right? But you have to decide like what, what type of lifestyle do you want? Do you want that corporate ladder, ladder climbing, chasing gig? And if so, cool. Go after it. Have fun with it. But man, if if uh, if you think that there's a better way of living your life, I can tell you that I think that there is a much better way of living your life than inside the walls of a of a, ma a massive corporation. Then then go and figure out what you can do to give 
Like, what can you do to, to be able to survive, give your family what they need? And then how can you contribute what you really want? Because honestly, Mark, you and I both know that like, once you have the time in your life, like once you have the money solved and then you have more time, well, then all of a sudden you have more time for a bigger purpose. And life is really about the bigger purpose. It's not about providing for your family. It's really about giving something but bigger. And that's, that's where I think that uh, it's kind of cool. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, so Paul, you know, you kind of mentioned the difference between coach and mentor. What's, what's the difference? Look, a, a coach uh, always believes that the answer is in the coachee. So, you know, they have the answer. It's just you you've got to ask the questions to get that answer out. So um, a great analogy was, you know, they are always own what's in the glass if you look at a glass of water, but what you're doing is just tipping the glass in different angles to get them to see what's in it. So that's what coaching is. Whereas a mentor will share their experience to draw out options that a mentee can then go and make a choice as to which ones they'll, they'll do. So one comes, you know, coaching is basically coming from the person you're coaching. A mentor is actually sharing their experience to draw out options for the mentee. Uh, excellent. Excellent. So from your experience, what would you say is some of the worst advice you see or hear given as a mentor? Look, that's a, that's a, a great, a great question. And I know we haven't got all day, but there's, I think there's um, a lot of people that look for mentors that are, you know, 10, 20 years into their journey. And they're used to working with businesses that are much larger. You know, they so they'll say, look, you know, go and get this expert, go and spend money there. And, and they're just too far ahead of where someone might be. And they'll follow people like, um, you know, Gary V or, or some of the big guys. And it, it's, uh, some of the advice they're giving is where people have got, you know, bucket loads of money to spend and test and iterate. So a classic example is just go do paid ads. No, just go do Facebook ads. That will solve all your woes. But that's, it's not that easy. It's not that simple. And if you're, you know, um, a solopreneur that hasn't got a big budget, you can risk a lot of money on taking advice like that. Oh, yeah. I, we, we see that all the time. Oh, you want to scale? go into paid traffic. It's, you know, you, it's, it's the only way to scale. It's the only way to get a predictable business. Well, you could predictably go out of business if you don't know what you're doing. They don't talk about that predictability. They don't talk about you got how well you need to know your numbers and um, you know, all those things, uh, how much you can spend for a lead. It's just, Oh yeah, go do paid traffic. I a hundred percent agree. Scott Todd, you're, you're yeah. shaking your head. No, I'm just thinking, you know, like th there is a very clear difference between like coaching and mentoring, right? Because ultimately think about it for a minute, like anybody could proclaim that they're a coach, right? Like I'm a coach and we see this all the time. Like, Hey, I've done, I I've, I've been doing this business for six months and I've done 40 deals. Uh, and I'm a coach now. Well, you don't know nothing, right? Like hate to tell you, but you don't know anything. And so, you know, it's easy to, to proclaim that you're a coach. Really the value, I think, of any type of relationship that you're going to do, even though it's called coaching per se, is not necessarily coaching, it's mentoring, right? Like it's, it's really what Paul said. It's really about not, not swaying a person saying, do this, do that, do that. Because if you do, well, then all of a sudden, now, now you've just kind of like created a little mini you. And I think that's fine if you're trying to learn something, right? Like you want to learn how to do this business. That's really where flight school is. That's kind of like a virtual coaching deal. But when you get to one-on-one, -on -one, you don't want someone telling you, go do this, because then you're forever reliant on that person to make your decisions. And how many times do we see people, they go through some process and they're like, you know, they, they've been doing this program for a while. And then they're like, well, what should I choose or what should I do? Well, you should have the knowledge. Hopefully you have the knowledge through our mentoring to be able to make decisions that will guide you the way that you want to. So, I think that there's a big difference between, I, I like what Paul said. I think there's a big difference in coaching somebody and then mentoring them, right? Like mentoring gives them the skill set to make decisions because after a program's over, guess what? You got to make decisions on your own. That's the way it works. 
No, a, yeah, absolutely. So, so Paul, I'm, let's assume that I'm a solopreneur, Scott's a solopreneur, and we want to start getting more leads. And today, the, the lead du jour is going to be Facebook ads. What is your take on it? Yeah, like, as I said, I don't think uh, Facebook ads, look, Facebook ads is great where you know you've got to offer the converts and it's proven and tested and then you can throw, you know, oil on the fire, so to speak. But I think a lot of people are, haven't got an offer that converts and that's why their business isn't always growing to fund, you know, the, the money to invest personally. So to me, I actually don't think Facebook's the place to play. I actually think LinkedIn if you're a B2B business, if you're selling B2B, LinkedIn is the place to be at the moment. And the great news is that it actually doesn't cost you any money other than your time. Now, I know your time is valuable, but LinkedIn, I think, is a lower risk way. And there's really three key things. We've got a, a large community where we support people with LinkedIn, and there's three key things to do. So the first one is the content piece. And people always go, oh, I don't know what to say, I, I, you know. It's 1,300 characters, right? So I just literally did a, a post in 15 minutes while I was waiting to, to jump on here. So, you know, the content piece, and there's certain little things with the algorithm for LinkedIn that you got to know. Like, i.e., if you put a link out, like imagine if you had a shop and then there's a big sign in the middle of the shop saying, hey, go next door, right? No one likes that. LinkedIn's the same. So you've got to make sure that there's little nuances of things you do with the content. The next is a collaboration. If you're posting on LinkedIn and expecting to get people to see your content by doing it solo, you're in the wrong game. It is a team sport, right? The, the algorithm, you've got to get a certain amount of likes and a certain amount of comments to boost that post. And if you're not working with other people, it's just not going to go anywhere. And the last one is connection. Like I always say to people, how often do you walk into a cafe and say, hey, would you buy me a coffee? It doesn't happen. So why would it happen on LinkedIn? So people send these cold messages to people that they've never given any value to and accept they're going to say, yeah, sure, I'll buy you a coffee. So, you know, to me, if you get those three things right, like last year for me, you know, most of it was spent in a hospital. I've got to say, I got 680. Uh, yeah, 683,000 views, 20,000 comments, uh, sorry, 20,000 likes and 6,000 comments, right? All from just posting five times a day, great valuable content on LinkedIn. And that ended up in 172 new clients, right? So if you're, you know, if you're thinking, I just don't know how to drive traffic, I don't know how to be seen, I don't know how to be authority, I'm telling you, LinkedIn is the place to be. Do we sell raw land on LinkedIn? Can you? Yeah, can we? You said B2B. I don't yeah, know if look, B2B. I think what you can do is find people that need education on how to invest wisely. So if that's the question, yeah, sure, you can do that on LinkedIn. Scott, how are your thoughts? No, I think, I think that, um, you know, Mark, I think that ultimately you got to find who your market is, right? Like, where's your market? Is your, is your market on Facebook? And, you know, you know, a lot, a lot of people are using Facebook, like, look, Facebook is going, I think Facebook is going like down usage is going down. I don't, I don't have the stats behind it, but I know like me, I don't like Facebook. You're not going to catch me on Facebook. And so essentially you got to find the platforms where people are. And I think oftentimes people think like, Oh, I'm going to go on Facebook because everybody's on Facebook. Well, I have a Facebook account, but guess what? I don't go on it. And so, you know, if someone was trying to target me, they're not going to find me on Facebook. They might see my name, but they're not going to be able to target me. But where am I? They need to go find me. They need to find where they are, where they are. And this is really where Grant Cardone even says, you know, omnipresent be everywhere hit all of the platforms, right? And I think that that's a mistake that people make is, I see it all the time. Oh, I'm only selling my stuff on, on Facebook. Why? R why? Why only one? Why not everywhere? Be everywhere. Be omnipresent. And I think that that's a, that's a, big, a big game changer if, when you open your mind and think, like, I'm going to be everywhere. I'm going to hit all these platforms. Some will work, some won't work. You just got to keep trying. I mean, but you got to keep showing up too. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, well, Paul Higgins, your uh, your mentorship has been invaluable, and I know you've, you've got to run soon. 
So I just want to ask you for a tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the Art of Passive Income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? Yeah, look, I've got two. So one is a free chapter of my book. So it's called Build, Live, Give. And it's about, you know, my journey of leaving corporate, mentoring lots of people that have done the same thing to Build, Live, Give. So that's, if you just go to buildlivegive.com, on the top right of the website, there's a free chapter. And the second thing is, I totally agree with Scott around, you know, you've got to go where your audience is. And if your audience is on LinkedIn, or even if they're on another platform, where do they go to first understand you these days? It's LinkedIn, right? Because it's, you know, it is the easy way to give your experience, etc. No other platform gives that. So what I'll do is if you go to build live, oh, sorry, BLG download, Dot com, so that's blgdownload.com. I'll give you five killer tips to sharpen your profile. So when people do hit your profile, there's a chance that they're going to actually have that coffee chat with you. All right, fantastic. Before we get to Scott Todd's tip of the week, I just want to remind everybody that today's uh, podcast is sponsored by Flight School. Want to see how 16 weeks can start generating you passive income, transforming your life? building a business, getting you out of the rat race, getting you out of the nine to five. Well, learn more. Go to the lion, the land forward slash training and see how Scott Todd can take you up that mountain of land investing without renters, rehabs, renovations, rodents quickly, safely, and efficiently schedule a call the land forward slash training and learn more. All right, Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Look, man, Mark, every now and then, um, like I might need to create a nice looking chart, right? Like a graph and I can go to Excel and do it. But guess what? Check out chartit.io, chartit.io. You can go in there, you can add data and man, you can come up with some great looking charts. Uh, if, if you need charts for whatever reason, something unique, something that's not being found in Excel, you can save them to a file. You can embed them in HTML. I mean, you can put them on your website. Uh, you can have a lot of fun with this thing. So if you need to chart something, check this place out. Wow, this is geeky. I yeah, I like, I like the map. Chart? Like the map with the colors and stuff. Oh, yeah. Wow. And it's free. Holy yeah. cow. This is insane. But they do, I do like they have a freemium model, so they're not going to go out of business. Right. I like that. Um, Paul, does it bother you when you see these free softwares? Does it, like, I'm not going to sign up for it. Gonna, they don't have a sustainable business. No, I think like you said, if they've got a step ladder, so if they've got a, a freemium, so you get lots of value, but then they've got a, a premium offer that's paid. I think that's good because yeah, if they're, they're free only, I think that is a risk unless they've uh, got huge VC funds. And uh, even if you look at Uber and, uh, a couple of other companies, that doesn't always mean you're going to have long-term success. Oh, absolutely. And my tip of the week is learn more about Paul Higgins. Go to buildlivegive.com. Buildlivegive.com. And Paul also gave some great resources as well. Well, Paul Higgins, are we good? We're good. Brilliant to uh, be on, Mark and uh, Scott. And if there's uh, anything that listeners need as you said they can just find me at buildlivegive.com fantastic scott todd are we good we're good mark all right well i want to thank the listeners and just remind them that the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like a paul higgins all the way from australia is if you do us three little favors you got to subscribe you got to rate you got to review the podcast send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com we are going to send you for free the 97 dollars passive income launch kit course, as well as the latest wholesaling course, how to double your money 30 days or less. Please do that. All right, Scott, you ready? I am. One, two, three, let Let freedom freedom ring. ring. Paul's like, man, it's early in the morning for this. (laughs) It is. It's early over here. Believe me. Oh, when's the last time you did a Tim Tam Slam? Never. No kidding. Nah, I'm, yeah, I'm not Aussie. I'm not a true Aussie. 
Vegemite every day, but Tim Tams, no, nah, I'll leave that for my wife, wife and daughter. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, rugby? Oh, sorry, are we still live? Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. curious. Yeah, no, nah, Victorian. In a, Victorian. So, Victorian, we don't follow rugby. It's uh, AFL, Australian F- Football League. You know. Okay. The, yeah. It's, All right. You know, we, we do multiple things. We just don't run and hit each other. You know, we've got to jump, we've got to handball, we've got to kick. Yeah. We, as omnipresent, as Scott said, yeah, Australian footballers are omnipresent. They, they got all, all the bases covered. All right. Well, thanks again. And um, see everybody next time.